What's up, Brand Man Network? It's Brand Man Sean, and I'm back with another exclusive. And today I'm talking about an exclusive exclusive because what I realized is a lot of people don't really understand what a meme strategy looks like. They think you could just create memes and blow up, but I'm going to take you through the step by step of how we really get this thing done. Like when these artists blow up, what these things happening in the background are. Now, you see me sitting down like this. Well, you probably, you don't know I'm sitting down, but I'm sitting down right now. I'm at the computer. I'm not doing that regular setup because I have to enlist the help of a fancy PowerPoint. So I created a fancy PowerPoint. Check this thing out. Wow, check that out, that fancy PowerPoint, man. The way the black pops off of the white. It's like I'm in the world racism with one PowerPoint. Now, if you see these first words going viral versus becoming a meme all right they're completely different understand that going viral means you get a lot of visibility a lot of people are sharing and things are moving things are popping you see this happening with a lot of people all the time but most of those people who don't last right it's almost like having a one-hit wonder of some sorts is the difference between going viral and becoming a meme becoming a meme is really this lasting thought is really pushing a specific thought it's branded almost it will really is branded into your mind and understand that meme is a real word meme existed before social media and so and then the word social uh, meme actually alludes to the original idea of a meme creating memes versus a meme strategy that's another thing creating a meme you know even having it shared a little bit that's not necessarily a meme strategy even if it goes viral obviously so let's get into that what does this really look like number one you need to create memes for a meme strategy. And I'm talking about 100 memes. That's the way I like to start, right? Just because if you think about creating a song, you have to create a lot of them a lot of times just to really get into that creative groove. You have to, you know, keep creating things just so you can find that hit song. And some points, this meme that you create, all the memes that you create, there's going to be some of them that they aren't as strong as others, but some of them are going to be hits. And that's what you're really looking for. So that's one part about it. But then three main ideas. Understanding, once again, what a meme is, it's an idea. It's a specific thought that gets branded into, into the mind. So you have to consider your brand, everything you know, whether it's about the, a song you have, whether it's about your brand, and you have to Think about the ideas around them and create memes around those ideas. Here's an example, Blueface. Blueface is an artist with, when he went blew up meme-wise, he had multiple ideas. And when I say multiple ideas, look at the fact that people said that he was offbeat and you saw that become a meme in itself, right? Then people talked about specific lines that he had and they thought they were funny, meme in, within itself. And then, of course, you had like Tatiana that became a meme within itself. Those are three ideas attached to the same person. If you can get multiple of those, you will have so much more powerful of a brand outside of just going viral. And now people are sticking to you and really knowing who you are. And you're probably building a legitimate fan base from it. Most people just have that one idea. And and we can get into some of that other stuff later. But just keep this this in mind. You want a hundred memes probably just to create so you can get some things going and then three main ideas. And with those three main ideas, you need to create 10, maybe 20 around that one idea. So you can push that you're hoping for those to catch on. However, you know, you're going to have an extra 40 memes probably that are just around some random ideas. And it might be one of those that stick, stick on. So we'll get into that later. The next step, Oh, 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 this one right here, creating meme pages. People don't understand this part about it. Now, I'm not going to name names. I, I did in my original video, but like there, there's meme pages that get created, right? Meme pages, fan pages. So these people aren't necessarily just random people who decided to create a meme about an artist. This could be me saying Chris Brown is my is my um my client or something like that but chris nobody knows chris brown so the way this meme page gets created right i, I create my 100 memes i got my ideas and then i say i'm going to create chris brown meme page that's the obvious one when i say obvious versus low key which you see on the screen some people have chris brown meme page and then uh, some people do 
mm, it might be some random names, some random uh, avatars or something like that. And they might even have other memes that aren't necessarily related to that artist on the meme page. So you kind of do something obscure so people can't tell that it's just you. People will also create both of those. You might create multiple Chris Brown meme page, underscore Chris Brown, underscore meme page, and Chris Brown memes. Like those might all be pages that you create and you might still create um, some of these obscure pages or have these accounts that really only have like five posts, but two of them are your meme, your meme from uh, for you as an artist or whatever idea that you're trying to push. Now, what this, what's so relevant about this part right here is you need to set a catalog. We talk about creating catalogs of music. When something blows up and people start to go see and, and look what's going on, you want to have more music for them to check out and stick to. The same thing happens with the memes. So you're setting out your 100 memes or 50 of your memes or you know a decent amount of your memes on your meme pages. So when people start to check the hashtag later on, you actually have something for them to see. There's ideas. I can keep laughing at this person. I just discovered blue face. And now, now that I'm checking out the blue face hashtag, they have like five things that are making me laugh about blue face because, and now I'm like, who is blue face? Or now I'm sharing this and I'm just spreading the word of blue face. You have to set that catalog. You cannot rely on somebody else to create your vir virality and hope other people start to spark ideas. You want to actually keep things controlled. You don't want to leave virality to chance, but hopefully, of course, things keep going. Now, this is create meme pages. You're setting the stage. You put all these memes. You, you got them with a unified hashtag. All that stuff is cool. Next step is the waterfall method. Now we get into the promo phase a little bit. So got 100 memes on Instagram somewhere or whatever, whatever the social media platform is. Or, and now I have some of these memes that I really think are hidden, right? Because these other memes probably haven't even been seen yet. Keep that in mind. When you have your fan page, you're really not trying to get followers. None of that stuff really matters. You just need the hashtag to be filled up. Now you implement the waterfall method. I have a video on the waterfall method in Brand Man Network, so you can check that out on the influencer marketing um, playlist. But just to give you a quick reminder, it's when you start big and then you go small, right? Start big, go small. You, you get your meme shared or the content that you want to go viral shared on a bigger platform. And then you reach down to smaller platforms there and start to get that energy going. And of course you want it to be targeted. So you're getting continuously being seen within one community or, or a closer knit community versus I'm going to put something on Taylor Swift page. And then I'm going to post something on, I don't know, a uh, Gucci Mane's page. If, let me tell it there's no taylor swift instagram page but i know she has one of the top followers on instagram but you if you're too wide right obviously people aren't going to see these things repetitively the whole goal is to get these people to see these things repetitively so refer to the waterfall method video to get a little bit deeper into that and also remember that going big is relative think about where you are you don't have to just use a meme strategy once you can use it in levels so i can say I have 10,000 followers and now I'm going to reach out to pages with 100,000 followers as a big page to start myself off. And then I'm going to waterfall down from there. And then I started to move the ball down the field a little bit. Now I'm going to reach out to 500,000 level uh, pages and then waterfall down from there. This can continuously go up. So don't be discouraged if you don't have the money to reach out to, you know, um, you know, million, million follower pages, 3.5 million uh, follower pages, all that good stuff. So keep that in mind. Now, this is when the key starts. See, there's a lot of steps to this thing. I promise you, this is not, this is not like a short sprint. It's, it's a long game. Um, prom promote successes. So what does this mean? See which means stick, then push them. You have all these memes that you put out there, right? And once you put something out there, People are like, ha, 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 this is funny, or whoa, that's weird, or, or whatever the idea of your meme is. It doesn't have to be funny. It could be scary. It could be politically uh, controversial, whatever it is, right? And once you do that and start getting those promoted with the waterfall method, some of them are going to be obviously a lot more funny or will a lot, have a lot more traction than the others. You'll see them spread by more people and you'll see more interest in those. So then forget about whatever them other ones were. 
right? You had good ideas, but now it's like, okay, this one's going, I'm going to keep pushing this one. I'm going to find more pages for this one to push, be pushed on. And some of those memes, once people saw the initial ones, they're going to go back into the hashtag and then they're going to find other ones. And you might find out there's another meme that's a hit that you didn't know about or you didn't decide to pay for because you didn't think it was going to be as big as these other ones. And you might stop promoting some of the bigger ones to bring the next idea out. That's a part of it. But these are in phases as well. You want to keep making newer ones popular. So that's another benefit of having 100 memes already done because this is going to be in phases. One is popping is good. People are getting their laugh. Let that one run its course just a little bit. Now you come back with another one and then you let that one run, run its course a little bit. Now you come back with another one and then you can do this across two or three different ideas because a strong meme strategy, honestly, lasts probably at least two months, at least two months, but it could be two to four months really just for one pop. And then you might take a break and then you can do a meme strategy again another time. So see which memes stick, then push them. Next, see which memes ideas stick. When I say ideas stick and then create more of those memes and then push them as well. So you already had some memes that are just popping, push those. And then if there's some ideas that stuck, that especially that you didn't already create 10 for 24 and you only had like one of those memes, but the idea stuck and people kept sharing it and maybe even started to create their own. Now you got to say, yo, I got to create some more of these, or I need to take these other ones that are being pushed by other people. And I need to run with that narrative as well. So pay attention. A lot of this, and this is a lot of marketing um, for real, for real, especially while you're growing a fan base, by the way, like you're doing stuff, but you have to continuously pay attention to the marketplace and then keep doing stuff. You have to amplify the things that are working. It's not usually this one big mastermind I'm sitting sitting down, I figured it out and I, get, I go do it. It's like I sit down, I figure out a framework, I start to implement the framework. And from there, that's when you start to see people um, make, make it, uh, uh, adjustments based on what they're seeing in the marketplace. And all you do is you save money that way, honestly. So I'm not even gonna get into that, but waterfall method part two, right? If you go back to the promote successes, you're essentially going to do the waterfall method with those successes as well, or those new ideas particularly, right? Because you want people to continue to see these new memes, these fresh memes. You're constantly refreshing the content so people can think it's funny every single time. You don't want them to see the same meme again and again and again. And it's like those people who have a weak promo and they keep showing you the same flyer again and again and again, and it's, it's boring, right? People, it, go, it gets old very quickly. So, Use the waterfall method again. And, oh, another thing about the waterfall method, part two especially, if you already blew up, let's say, on a bigger scale, right? you pay some more expensive sites or uh, pages, the next time around, more likely, you can go a tier or two down and get the same amount of traction because the idea is already out there. They just need the new material. So you don't have to get out to the bigger people. You just go a few tiers down and now people already see it. They're already on it. It's already trending itself. They'll take it and social media will work for you. And that's when you get to the point where you're controlling the machine. That's the, I, that, I love when I get to that part of, of social media campaigns. Um, now, the long sprint. This is the part that you have to realize. I've, I've alluded to this already. These campaigns for a meme strategy, this isn't, I just pay a couple of people, right? And they post me one time. This is a true three months. I would give it at least three months and plan out to just keep watching, keep watching. Oh, this one's blowing up and all oh, that's cool. I'm running, I'm running, I'm running. And it's, it's been, you know, killing the game all week, maybe two weeks. All right, cool. It's time to put something else back in there. You got to gotta keep going. Got to keep going. All right. Yeah. I'm, all right. I'm watching. I'm watching. All right. What's the idea that's blowing up? And did somebody create another idea about this thing? And that now that they came into, you know, my world and start to say, yo, that, that song is funny or it sounds weird. And I never thought the song sounded funny, but let me cap off of it. We saw this with uh, 21 Savage and Issa, right? That blew up. It was just, he was just being him in an interview. Next thing you know, they were like, Hey, we're going to own this concept. A big part of branding is owning concepts. A lot of people are doing things, but people only are branded around the things they decide to own and let you know they own. Otherwise, somebody else will run off with it. So 
warning. Going viral can go bad and being a meme can go even worse if you do not plan or understand your brand. Remember, this is a strategy, a strategy. So you have to understand what you want out of the process, where you're going and understand your brand enough where there might be some memes that are blowing up and you have to be like, ah, yeah, they created this cool meme is blowing up, but that's not really going to mesh with the brand correctly. Or I need to figure out how do I bring this back to a level where I can benefit from? Because just because something's going viral around you doesn't mean it's going to benefit you. So keep that part in mind. That's why this is a strategy. There will be things that you didn't plan for in this process. They will be. There's a lot of variables you can't plan for, but understanding your strategy and what you want out of, out of it and the direction you're going is going to help you decide whether you react to something or whether you don't react to something. How do you include something into your brain now that you say, oh, yeah, I see that. That's dope. I could pull this in-house and I could start flipping that or say, yeah, I see that. That's cool, but I'm, I'm, I'm OK on that one. We're not going to try to give that one too much energy. And that is all for the meme strategy breakdown. When you create a meme, you have a meme strategy it is so much more to it. There's even things that I might have been able to add onto that. But there's it's, it's really a process. Right. And as you can see, I talked about the waterfall method. The waterfall method is a part of the meme strategy. Right. This is what I mean by these things aren't necessarily the end all be all. Even the meme strategy is a stage of some bigger strategies. It's, it's powerful by itself. Right. Even a waterfall method, it's powerful by itself. But when we're talking about a, a sustainable career, creating real fans, these things are just segments of bigger strategies. So keep all that stuff in mind. You're going to see a lot of other influencer um, strategy videos and things like that in Brand Man Network. Other than that, let's get to it. Ow.